I bet you are always cash strapped on your rental properties. The reason is because you're spending too much money and your expenditures are all out of whack. I'm gonna go over seven different ways on how to reduce your operating expenses so that way you can keep more cash in your pocket at the end of the month. All right, first thing to understand about owning rental property and really any business is there is always somewhere between three to 10% fat in your expenses. You're overspending on something somewhere. So going in with that framework, be open-minded to seven different strategies that I'm gonna share with you right now. So the first two culminate around the largest expense in owning rental property. And that comes down to tenant turnover. The first thing you can do in order to reduce ter tenant turnover is gonna be screening your tenants. By running them through a rental application and making sure that they hit on several different boxes, you'll be able to put better qualified people who are less likely to default on rent. Our tenant screening process hits on four points. The first one is verifying their income, making sure that their income is at least three times the monthly rental rate, and that's take-home income. The second thing that we look at is ensuring that they have zero eviction history in the past five years. The next thing is a background check and making sure that they have no violent criminal history. And finally is on their credit history and making sure that they don't have any current delinquencies on their credit report. Hey, I learned this the hard way because when I first got started, anybody who raised their hand with first month rent and security deposit, you're in, right? I just let them come in and I let them rent my property. And I have horror stories because of doing that. Make sure that you screen your tenants. It's gonna set you up for success in the long term. The second part of ensuring that you reduce your tenant turnover is making sure that you as the landlord take care of your property. Because even a good tenant who is screened properly, if they're in a unit that is not being taken care of, management is neglectful, and they're not being communicated properly with, they will leave and you'll have that tenant turnover expense still. So make sure that you are a good landlord. Do things like take care of the property. Do all the renovations on the front end so that way there's not a bunch of maintenance issues and maintenance requests while the tenant is in place. And if there is a maintenance request, make sure that you reply in a timely manner and address the issue quickly to keep the tenant happy. And finally, realize that when the tenant lease is coming up for renewal, be proactive on that side of things. Reach out to the tenant 90 days before their lease renews, 60 days before their lease renews, 30 days before their lease renews, and put some sort of incentives in place for them to sign a new lease sooner rather than later. Because the sooner you can get a new lease signed, the less stress you're gonna have as we get nearer and nearer to that lease expiring. So recap number two, don't be a slumlord, take care of your property. Number three is property taxes. A lot of properties are being reassessed in valuations right now, and a lot of times after you purchase a property, the value can get reassessed. Going into the county directory and seeing what the assessed value of your property is will give you an indication of whether you're paying too much in property taxes or maybe too little in property taxes. If you go in there and you realize that you're paying too much in property taxes, there are firms that you can hire in order to appeal those property taxes. We just did this with a property of mine in Houston, Texas. It's a, almost 600 units. Our assessed value was at $55 million. We hired a law firm to go in and appeal those property taxes, got it dropped down to $50 million assessed value. $5 million, about a 10% reduction. Our tax bill was about $1.1 million a year, and it's now 10% less, which is about a million dollars a year. It saved us $100,000 a year. That's $100,000 of real money going straight to the bottom line of my net operating income. What that does is give me an extra $100,000 of actual cash flow in operations with the property, but even more importantly, it increases the value of the building. At a 6% cap rate, that increases the value of the building by $1.7 million when I go to either refinance or sell that property. So make sure that you are appealing your property taxes. Number four is a big one over the past couple years, which is insurance. There's a couple ways that you can attack your insurance expense. First off, you can obviously shop your insurance around. You can go to multiple different providers, talk to some brokers, have them look around for the best quote on your insurance. That's easy to do, not difficult, but you're not gonna save a ton of money. 
Another thing that we've been doing with our properties is we are asking our insurance provider exactly what are the risks in this building? What are those things that we can help improve the property and start paying more money into the property instead of spending that money and lighting it on fire by paying it to the insurance company. If they tell us that we need to do something to the roof or the downspouts or the gutters and make sure the drainage is a certain way, all these other different things, I would rather make those improvements and put that money into the property to then improve the property value than keep on paying it to insurance. If I can make those improvements to the property and reduce my insurance rate, that's a great return on investment when you're looking at your insurance. So make sure that you contact your insurance agent and find out what the different risks are in that policy so that way you can then address those risks at your property level. And then one other thing that I've been looking heavily into is depending on the size of your portfolio, you might be able to put a captive insurance policy together. The issue with this is I own $500 million of real estate and my portfolio is still too small to create my own captive insurance. This is like self-insuring, uh, but approved a lot of times by the lenders. So what we're looking to do is, you might've heard about smart management. It's my AI property management software that we're launching that smokes everything else that's on the market. Well, for the early adopters and the folks that come on and start utilizing that property management software, we have a lot of transparency into how well they operate their properties. So once we have them uh, and we see how well they operate over the course of six to 12 months, we will create our own captive insurance and invite those users into our captive insurance policy. I just moved one of my properties over to a captive insurance policy, took my insurance premium from $1.1 million down to $536,000 per year. That's a $564,000 savings annually that again goes straight to the bottom line. By being able to cut my insurance cost in half, it increased the property value by almost $10 million from that one line item all because we moved over to captive insurance. So stay in touch with me, make sure that when smart management comes out around Q1 of 2025, you jump on the platform. It's not only gonna be a better service at a much lower price than what you're paying for property management software right now, but also as we see that you are a great operator of your property, you'll get invited into our captive insurance policy so that way you can substantially reduce your insurance expense. All right, number five is utilities, and this spans all the different utilities, your electric, your gas, your water, your sewer, uh, trash, all those different things. So first thing that you can do is you can, depending on if you're in a deregulated state or not a deregulated state, you can actually go to different electric providers and different gas providers in your state and see who charges the least kilowatt per hour or the least amount on the, the gas usage as well. You can also shop your trash. Right, get different quotes from all the different trash companies in order to make sure that you can reduce each one of those expenses as much as possible. Yeah, so that part's easy, pretty self-explanatory. What's more inside your control is things like these lights and the spotlights. We have changed out all the lights in our complexes to LED lights. And by doing that, we've been able to reduce our electric bills by about 25%. We've also installed low flow toilets, shower heads, and faucets in all of our apartments, which reduces our water bill by up to 40% annually. And when we're installing HVAC mechanicals, we're installing energy efficient mechanicals. And on an ongoing basis, we're making sure that we change out the filters and we maintain those mechanical systems on a regular basis. By maintaining them, it'll extend the life of those mechanicals by 30 to 50%. So make sure you're doing that for all of your mechanical systems. All right, so number six is all about maintenance, which I've already alluded to a couple of times in this video. But making sure that you're taking care of the property is gonna reduce your turnover. Also making sure that you're maintaining your mechanical systems is gonna reduce your utilities. But more importantly, what can you do to reduce your maintenance on an ongoing basis even before that. And that's when renovating your units, make sure that you're hardening the property. When I say hardening the property, we're doing things like instead of carpet, we're putting in LVP flooring and laminate flooring so that way it's easier to clean, easier to turn over and faster to do those things and cheaper to do those things. We also don't like any sort of moving parts and a lot of maintenance type stuff that can easily break or 
cost money to fix. So like, I'll give you an example. I don't usually put ceiling fans in our apartments. We usually just use flush mount globe lights because there's less pieces to break. There's less things to get dirty. There's less things to clean. It's just an easier, lower cost way to own rental property. We also do this with like the landscaping, putting in bushes and trees that are low maintenance, that don't need a bunch of tree trimming, uh, bush trimming, a lot of that kind of stuff where it gets overgrown or anything along those lines. So by hardening the property, it's gonna make your expenses a lot more predictable and reduced on an ongoing basis. All right, so the final one is management. And if you can reduce your management expense, this is gonna help reduce all the other expenses as well. Because if you have good, efficient management in place, they're gonna be paying attention to every single line item that I've already discussed. So a couple things here. First, shop your management companies. And you need to interview a lot of different third-party property management companies before you select one to ensure that they're a good one. Don't just go off of a good recommendation from somebody out of state because it truly depends state by state on how well a property management company will manage your property. Somebody who does a great job in the Southeast might not do a great job in Texas. And so making sure that they do a great job in the area that you own your rental property is gonna be critical. The other thing that I would say is the sooner you can take management in-house, the better you're gonna be because there's gonna be more transparency and more accurate information and more timely information than you can ever get from a third-party management company. The largest landlords, the biggest balance sheets that I know of in the real estate world all have in-house property management. Now it seems like a lot to take on to create your own property management for your portfolio, but one, it's critical, and two, there's tools out there. I've already mentioned smart management software. That is a CRM with accounting software, with workflow management, with property management software, all built into one. And it's all AI based with intelligent automations throughout. So that way, one, you can be empowered to take management in-house. Two, you don't need as many employees. Three, it'll train the employees that you do have so that way you can reduce your overall payroll cost. It creates real-time data, real-time information, complete transparency, and forward thinking of what could go wrong or things that you can do to help reduce your expenses, increase your income that you would normally have to rely on somebody else to do. It's all integrated into the AI component of the software. So keep an eye out for Smart Management. If you want to get on our wait list, check out smartmanagement.com. All right, I got good management in place. I'm taking off early today. Going to go pick up the kids from school and take them to the park. All because I've done all these things in my portfolio already. Go and implement these things. Let me know how it works for you. Appreciate you.